Hi, and welcome to Cheese In Depth. I'm Michael Landis, and today we are talking with Alberto and John. And we're going to be talking about a couple things about Italian cheeses, but predominantly we're going to talk about the history and also the cheese itself, Pecorino Romano. And I'm going to turn it over to John because he's got more information than I do, and I'm going to give him the chance to introduce Alberto to us. So, John. Hi, everyone. Thanks for, uh, thanks for tuning in and giving us some time. Um, I'm John DeMacco. I'm from the Ambriola Company, and we're a division of uh, Riccio Cheese Company. Um, and as a member of the Riccio Cheese Company, we've been a family company since 1877. Um, our facility in the U.S. is in uh, West Caldwell, New Jersey. We're an SQF level two converter. We make everything fresh to order, all the Locatelli grated cheese. And yes, we're gonna talk about Pecorino Romano, but we're gonna talk about Locatelli Pecorino Romano specifically. Um, and uh, maybe a little bit about the company and our practice, our sustainability, and uh, just touch on a couple of other items that we make uh, of interest in the correct geographic area to make perfect cheese in Italy. Um, and with me, I'm very happy and honored to have Alberto Riccio, uh, fourth generation, um, Arricchio in the cheese business, his great grandfather, grandfather, started the company. Great grandfather. There you go. You look very good. His great grandfather started the company in 1877 in Naples. So um, I've been around for, for a while in the cheese business. I'm about 45 years in the specialty cheese business. I've worked for a number of uh, uh, full line importers and manufacturers from the U.S. and I had the great honor and opportunity to sell Locatelli cheese in the U.S. to one of the best cheese makers in the world, uh, Arricchio. So I'll turn that over to Alberto. Uh, good evening uh, to everybody. Uh, sorry for my English. I hope that you can uh, understand my English. Uh, I'm very happy to be invited uh, today. Uh, like John say, uh, Auricchio Company was uh, established by my grand-grandfathers, me and my brother are the fourth generation, in the 1877 in the surrounding of Naples. Uh, and uh, it became famous uh, immediately for uh, the provolone because uh, my grand-grandfather created a particular recipe where uh, the taste of the cheese uh, was uh, completely different. I, I, I don't want to say that it's better. This is the consumer that must say that it's better, but for sure it is completely different from any other picante or sharp provolone. And starting from that long time, because now is 143 years uh, history, the company's growth and uh, uh, enlarge its business, not only in provolone, but uh, I can say now in all the uh, great Italian cheeses. And one of them uh, is the Locatelli Pecorino Romano that, uh, like John say, is not only a Pecorino Romano, but uh, he has also in this case uh, uh, something special because the Locatelli family was very similar to the Auricchio family. It was uh, a, a family business then in, in the years just after the Second World War was selling to Nestle, but we bought back. And so also in this case, uh, the recipe to make Locatelli is different from any other Pecorino Romano, and later we can go in the, in the details uh, of, uh, of this production. So now the, the group, uh, and Ambriola, I am very happy, is a part of uh, our group, uh, and don't forget that Ambriola, John, next year will be 100 year history. So also Ambriola is a long, long history in the U.S. market and a big reputation, 100 year in the market is a very important. And uh, uh, like I say, now the company produce, and I, I want to, to say again, produce, because the, the philosophy of Auricchio is that if we produce from the milk with our uh, recipe and with our experience, we can control all the all the, 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 the process and the quality. So we prefer to produce our cheeses instead of buy, age, and sell. Of course, it's nothing bad in that, but the philosophy of Auricchio is to produce. This is the reason why now we have seven different plants all over Italy, because we have to respect uh, the uh, DOP or PDO, that is the European rules uh, to produce uh, different cheese in different times. 
different milk, for instance, uh, in uh, the plant of Locatelli that is uh, located in Sardinia, in Macumer, in the middle of Sardinia, is the area where you can produce uh, the Pecorino Romano and all the other sheep's uh, uh, cheeses. So the, the plant of Macumer is specialized in Locatelli, Pecorino Romano, and all the other uh, cheeses coming from sheep milk. Then we have other six uh, plants uh, all over Italy for respect to the different type and production of, uh, of our cheeses. Uh, regarding Locatelli, we can say that uh, uh, is uh, more than uh, 2,000, not, not, sorry, not Locatelli, Pecorino Romano is more than 2,000 here that is produced. The name, uh, they say, nobody knows if it's true, but they say that the name be belongs from the Roman legions when they go to uh, all the Europe. Uh, uh, the only one cheese is that they can bring with them uh, uh, because there was, of course, no possibility of keep uh, refrigerated, was the Pecorino Romano. And so that uh, is the, the history of the type of cheeses. And uh, Locatelli is producing Pecorino Romano for over 100 years. I think more or less the same of us. We have not exactly the date where it was uh, established because uh, uh, all the, 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 the papers was uh, lost when uh, it go through the, the Nestle for uh, 10 years. Then we buy back uh, and now we keep, what is very important in our opinion, that we, that we keep and continue to produce the Locatelli Pecorino Romano like the Auricchio Provolone in the old way. So like my grandfather produced 100 years ago and the same for Locatelli. So also for Locatelli, we produce our own rennet in Sardinia. And so the, the recipe or the ingredients is a kind of secret because of course we have to declare all the ingredient by law, but uh, how to produce and the percentage and the way to produce the cheese is our, uh, is our secret. So I can say, and the consumer can confirm, that also with Locatelli, the taste of this cheese is different from any other. I repeat, I don't want to say that it's the best, this is the consumer. But for sure, you can recognize the taste of Locatelli uh, between all the other Pecorino, like you can recognize the taste of uh, Provolone Auricchio between all the other Provolone. Uh, we have some particular in both the production. Uh, for instance, in uh, uh, the production of Locatelli Pecorino Romano, we still uh, sold the cheese by hands, like uh, 100 years ago. Now the majority of the cooperative, because also another thing is important, is that uh, all our competitive competitor is more or less uh, cooperatives in Sardinia, uh, to save uh, money and to, 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 to have less uh, workers, they put the pecorino on the, uh, on the, on the brain. Brain, John? Brain. Brain, sorry. I, I, sorry, sorry for me, on the brain. We still sold by hands. What it means that we have to sold seven times, very little quantity of salt, for six time, instead to put the cheese in a brine, you leave there 20 days, and that is, uh, and that is. We prefer and we think that uh, it's better to respect the tradition. So we still produce and sell the cheese by hands. And this is uh, something interesting because if you put very little quantity of salt for six times during the aging of uh, the, the Locatelli, uh, it remain uh, uh, less salt than the other because the salt uh, go in uh, naturally in the cheese uh, little by little instead of to uh, stay in the water and by osmosis uh, uh, go in the cheeses. So there are some and also we age the, the, our locatelli minimum for nine months but many times for more and also this is something uh, particular because uh, you know if you keep the cheese for uh, uh, for many months. For, first of all, it costs you more, but also if there are a little uh, problem, a little defect in the aging, uh, the problem will grow. So only the perfect cheese can be aged for a long time. Like provolone, we age provolone for 
18, 12, 18, sometimes 24 months, it's difficult to age a cheese if it is not perfect. Because any little problem, aging will be explode. Uh, another thing that I think could be interesting that uh, in, this is in the last uh, uh, 10 years, uh, all the plant uh, of, the, of the group, so of course the one in, uh, in Sardinia for Locatelli, but the one for Auricchio and also the other that we have for uh, the other cheeses like Taleggio, Parmigiano, Reggiano, we will speak later, we try to uh, make the best that we can to respect uh, the uh, environment. And so we put the, uh, as, uh, how do you call solar panel? Solar panels, yes. On all, exactly. the, on all the roof. So we can produce uh, almost, it depends of course by the, the, the period of the year and the, and the, and the, 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 the big of uh, the, 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 the plants, but we minimum we produce 50, uh, till 90% of uh, what we need, uh, like energy. And of course, uh, uh, we doesn't consume uh, uh, energy uh, coming from, uh, from outside. And also the part that we need uh, to not that uh, the, the, uh, we are not producing, we use uh, the a cogenerator. So we use gas instead of fuel. And also this is something that respect, uh, because you know, gas has a very, very little or nothing at all uh, release uh, in the atmosphere. And so we have a cogenerator, you say cogenerator, I think, uh, also in English. Cogenerator, yes. yes cogenerator. Exactly. In, uh, in, in uh, five of the seven plants, of course, the biggest one, because uh, is a very complicated machinery, and we use uh, natural gas instead of fuel. Another important thing is the, the water, because in a, in a, dairy, in a dairy plant, uh, there are a lot of uh, use of water for everything, for washing, for, from, uh, uh, for uh, uh, refresh the cheese when, when it is uh, just uh, uh, made. So we have, uh, uh, we have put in our, in our uh, plants uh, to re uh, recoup the majority of the water. So, uh, we use uh, uh, the water, of course, clean one uh, more time, not just one time. And the most important things that we have done is the way. The way is what uh, uh, remain after you have produced any kind of cheese, provolone, locatelli, uh, taleggio, because you know, uh, milk uh, for making the, the, the cheese, you, you use uh, the 10% of the milk. It depends. Sometimes it's the 15, sometimes like Parmigiano-Reggiano is only the 8.5 percent of, uh, of the gallons of milk. All the other is whey. So we use the whey or to produce ricotta, that is a cheese uh, uh, that is produced uh, uh, with the whey, or we concentrate. We have two big concent uh, concentration of uh, whey, where we re recoup the 80% uh, of water, and this is water, perfect water, clean water, that we reuse in in the plant because it's uh, uh, um, uh, perfectly clean water uh, through the machinery that uh, uh, extract the water from the whey, and uh, uh, we sell uh, the. The, 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 the part of the way that uh, remain a kind of honey, uh, we call in Italy melassa, is a kind of honey, we sold to French or German company that use uh, this uh, uh, concentration of whey to make uh, our uh, food, drink food, or some in, uh, in pharmacies. And so we have a recoup of 85% of the water belong from from the milk uh, that we collect uh, in Sardinia and uh, uh, where we produce provolone. Uh, another thing is the, the, the well, uh, John, if you have to interrupt me whenever you want. No, 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 you're doing great, man. <laughs> another thing is more important now in these last three, four years is the wellness of the, of the, of the cows or of the sheep. And uh, of course we have no our own cows or sheep, but we, Pretend is not exactly the word that I want to say, but we ask to our farmers or to our shepherds to give us a certificate where the 
cows and the sheep uh, is uh, in uh, perfect health, uh, is free, uh, for instance, for the sheep, uh, they are completely free to go around and they eat uh, the, the grass and all the different kind of little flower that there are in Sardinia. I say that because it's not only nice, but it's very important because if you eat uh, the uh, different kind of grass or different kind of flowers, you can, uh, you can find this special tasting also in the cheese because of course what they, the, the sheep eat, uh, uh, you can find also in the milk and in the cheese. And so we have a certification, I repeat, not directly because we doesn't have animals, but uh, uh, our farmers and our shippers uh, uh, give us a certification that all the, uh, the, the animals is in perfect condition and they have also a very uh, uh, open and uh, uh, wellness. Area, yeah, and the last point that I want to touch, then uh, I, I, I stop to some uh, uh, question, uh, is that uh, uh, we are very uh, in, uh, um, attend to the uh, packaging. So the less plastic uh, in the packaging. Of course, we start uh, this one in 2020. Uh, then we have also the coronavirus, so we have some problems, uh, but we are going through that. Uh, and I think that in a maximum a couple of years, so the end of 2021 or the beginning of 2022, all our packaging will be uh, rec uh, recyclable. How do you say, John, in English? Thanks. Or oh, help me, I'm sorry for that. Green friendly. Yeah. We, are studying, we are studying with our uh, uh, R&D uh, all the possibility to use uh, uh, less plastic and if we had any way to use plastic that should be recyclable. Uh, what else, um, John? <laughs> well, that was pretty good. Um, I don't know, I wouldn't know where to uh, go in. So, okay, so... Uh, the Embryola Company was established in 1921. We'll turn 100 this year, as Alberto mentioned earlier. Um, and our, actually, we started in Youngstown, Ohio. Very interesting. So um, we moved east um, and became importers of uh, hard cheese and Pecorino Romano. And for, you know, almost 100, uh, for 100 years, we've been Pecorino Romano, if not the largest, one of the largest importers of Pecorino Romano in the U.S. Um, we, uh, we, were, uh, we were fortunate to have the distribution exclusive for Locatelli. I believe that was in, um, I think that was in about 1980 or so. Um, and we've maintained that exclusive. And then, of course, the Arricchio Company uh, purchased Locatelli in 1997 um, and kept it with the Embriola Company. In uh, 2015, um, the Arricchio Company acquired Embriola. So we became a proud member of the Arricchio family. Um, and since that time, um, we've uh, improved the uh, production facility uh, to offer uh, better, safer packaging. Uh, we just actually this week qualified for 2020 um, SQF Level 2 again. Um, we're very proud of that. We take a lot of pride in our work. Um, and some of the things about us that make us kind of special is uh, we are a make-to-order uh, company. So if you're going to buy Locatelli, nice little cup, Locatelli, or the wedge. Uh, we actually produce it for who's ever supplying you with it for their order in particular. Um, we're very proud of that. We're a few companies who does, who, who does produce to order. So that's just, that's just us. And, you know, we're happy to continue the tradition of, uh, of the Riccio company. The seven plants is uh, located uh, all over uh, uh, Italy, but we keep uh, our uh, first original plant in Naples, not really Naples, in the surrounding of Naples, where the grand-grandfather started in 1877. And we still produce uh, 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 more or less the 20% of our provolone in, in, the, in, in, in the first company. That, of course, is not nothing more than uh, what it was 140 years ago, but only the, the location. Uh, then we have the major production of uh, uh, provolone in Cremona, where is the headquarters of the group and where I live, because my grandfather, so the son of the founders, uh, moved to the north of Italy in the beginning of 19th century, 1915, 1920, 
for just one reason, for the milk. Uh, while, they grow, the, while the business uh, of the company grows, we need uh, more milk and especially uh, uh, high quality milk. And in the south of Italy, the milk uh, was always uh, uh, square and used for mozzarella. So my grandfather, my grand grandfather say to the son, go to the north of Italy where you can find all the milk that you want and especially in, uh, in, in very good quality. So we are in Cremona for the beginning of 19 uh, century. So I repeat, 1915, 1920. And this is the headquarters of, 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 of our company. Then we have one in Sardinia that or, or I already uh, um, named, uh, that is the Locatelli, and all the ship's production is uh, located in Sardinia. We have one uh, in the north of Italy, close Brescia, that uh, uh, the name is Caseificio Villa, where they produce uh, uh, fresh mozzarella, but also three uh, PDO, one of which is uh, Taleggio, that is very, very popular in Italy and it becoming very popular in the uh, US. And uh, this company is the number one in the consortium of Taleggio. You know that when the consortium was uh, uh, established, 20, 30, it depends by the consortium. The, the, the oldest is the Parmigiano Reggiano one that I think is no more than 40 years ago. So the company that uh, uh, agreed to be member of the consortium have a number that put on the cheeses. Uh, in the Taleggio one, uh, the, our company that is, I repeat, the name is Auricchio Caseificio Villa, as the number one in Taleggio. So it was the first company that accept to uh, um, uh, respect the rules of the consortium of the Taleggio. Then we have other plans very quickly, one for Parmigiano Reggiano, because we are also strong in the Parmigiano Reggiano business. And uh, uh, we have another one for Gorgonzola, that my brother, I am the sales manager, the salesman, but my brother is the production man, so more important than me. <laughs> my brother also say that where you produce gorgonzola is the only one cheeses where mold is welcome. And so where you produce gorgonzola is better not to produce any other cheeses. So we need or we decide to have a plant only for gorgonzola production that the name is uh, Colombo, is very well known uh, also in US because yeah. it is 1912 established the Colombo company. And we produce only Gorgonzola, the three type of Gorgonzola, that is the Dolce, the ma Picante or Mante style, and uh, uh, the uh, Gorgonzola with Mascarpone is a, is a kind of mix. Uh, and then we have, uh, this is more or less our, then we have two uh, important uh, uh, companies outside Italy, that the one is Ambriola, that is the most important of all, and one is Spain, uh, but it is, and I always repeat, because for me it's very important, these two uh, companies outside Italy is only to distribute our product. So we doesn't produce no one pound of cheeses outside Italy. If you want, we can speak about the three cheeses that uh, uh, is in the, in, the, in the agenda. So Provolone, Locatelli, and, and Taleggio. Is up on you. What, what do you think? So Provolone is a very typical cheese of south of Italy. Naples, uh, uh, Sicily, uh, Puglia, like Bari, the, the south of Italy. And this is the reason why my grand-grandfather start with... Uh, the provolone business. Provolone normally has two uh, uh, different uh, type. The mild, dolce, we call dolce, mild, or piccante, that is sharp. Auricchio, because he's leader, in Italy we have over the 52% of the market. This is the Nielsen, you know, the Nielsen uh, um, uh, numbers that give us uh, every month. So not our, is really uh, the, the, the company that make uh, the, the analysis of the, the market. Uh, we have more type of provolone, not only the two typical, that is the mild and the, and the sharp, the picante, but we have also we call young, that is little provolone, maximum uh, two pounds, uh, complete, so with rope and wax, that is very, in my opinion, very pretty because it's a complete provolone, that is, uh, 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 and we call young, like giovane in Italy, 
and it is a mild provolone age uh, for a couple of months and is different from the mild one. And then we have the Stravecchio. Stravecchio in, it, in English will, uh, means uh, extra age, like the, we have wine Stravecchio, we have uh, liquor Stravecchio, and we have provolone Stravecchio. Then uh, for make, uh, uh, the consumer recognize, we make a black coat outside the, 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 the Stravecchio. And it is uh, age more than the other one. It is between 18 and 24 months. But the most important things, the rennet is different. So it is not only more age, but it starts Stravecchio. Because it starts with a different rennet of the picante. And the picante is a different rennet for the dolce. And so any different kind of provolone has a different recipe and a different... Uh, aging in our in our warehouse uh, just to say something on provolone i think the provolone is well known in in the u.s market but just to give you an idea in my opinion provolone is one of the most uh, uh, useful uh, cheeses uh, in, uh, in in the kitchen where you cook because it's melty perfectly so you can put provolone all over you want and uh, in uh, really few seconds, 30 seconds, is melted perfectly. So you, you can use over a hamburger or over an eggs, or like my mother do. My mother is 90 years old and she is still the boss of the company. <laughs> that, that is the reality. She using pizza. So she mix mozzarella and provolone because uh, uh, she say that uh, if you use only mozzarella, it is too wet and the pasta of the pizza become too wet. So you can use provolone, less because it gives you more tasting, and also it's better because it's not so wet like mozzarella. So she mix, and sometimes she uses mild provolone, but many times she uses also picante provolone for a, a, a nice tasting uh, or something. So I repeat, provolone is really very, very useful all over. You can also, I can't say grating because it's not correct, right. but you can shred on uh, pasta. Of course, some type of pasta. You couldn't put provolone over a risotto alla milanese, but it's perfect on uh, a, 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 red, a red sauce pasta or a Sicilian pasta where you want to give a little bit more tasting. So you can shred the provolone, the picante provolone, over your pasta and you have a great, great pasta. Then there are three typical Italian uh, pasta that you must must use Pecorino Romano Locatelli, or Pecorino Romano, but of course Locatelli, that is the carbonara and the pesto is with uh, Pecorino Romano. Um, so there are a number of provolone uh, companies um, that, that make varying uh, types of, of cheese and um, not all certainly, but many are using a, a natural ingredient, but it's called lipase and they add that um, to the, to the, to the in the cheese making process to give you that very, very heavy, in my opinion, somewhat off-putting um, over piquant flavor um, that you can derive from that cheese at about, at about five months or so. Um, we never use lipase. Again, it's a natural ingredient, so there's nothing uh, unnatural about it except you're making a flavor out of something that is not there by adding something to it. So for us to age 12, uh, 18 months, naturally um, and have a perfect cheese at the end that that's very, very important. And that goes back to proprietary rennet that's been in the family since 1877. So just a little something about it. Again, our cheeses are different. Um, we are a big name, you know, but we are artisan cheese makers, especially in the way we craft. And no, we don't make small batches, but we look so, after each batch as it's important. So, thank so John, thank you, because I, I forgot to tell uh, that we does a yearly pay, the pie is, because in my mind is so far from, from our that I forgot to, but of course it's very important because you can have a picante taste that is not really picante, it's something that uh, burn your tongue. So it's not really the it's perfect fine. way. You can use lipase and in four or five months you have, you should have a good uh, pica uh, picante provolone. We prefer to give the time because uh, uh, we prefer to wait 18 months, 15 months, but the, the picante tasting must coming out naturally, only with the time, with the, we control in all, in all our warehouse, we have a, a, a strictly control of humidity, 
and of temperature, because the mix of these two uh, important things uh, make the cheese uh, uh, aging perfectly. So we have an humidity and a, a temperature that is controlled by the machinery, of course, but also by the people daily. We, we try to uh, respect, uh, we have a name, really. Sorry if uh, I don't want to, to seem uh, arrogant, but really Auricchio is the, the most famous brand in Provolone and Locatelli the most famous brand in Pecorino. So, of course, sometimes there are some production that is not perfect because it's natural. It should be impossible not to have uh, 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 some problems. But whenever we found some cheeses that is not perfect, we take away the brand and we sell to unbranded, uh, to people that uh, reuse that. If they go out from our plant with Locatelli brand or with Auricchio brand, must be the first quality at all. Because the name that we built in 145 years uh, is very easy to destroy in five or, or, or also less. So the, also the control before going in the market is one of the most important point of our companies. Oh, Taleggio, like I told you before, probably is not so famous in the US. Also, if I see that is uh, increasing uh, in, the, in the last five or six years, is, in my opinion, a great uh, cheese. Completely different from Provolone and from Pecorino because it's uh, uh, burned and uh, uh, created in the north of Italy, uh, close to the Milano area or the, 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 the Swiss, uh, just be, uh, uh, close to the border of, uh, of France and Swiss, is uh, a semi-soft um, uh, semi cheese, but with a very, very typical flavor that I love it, really love it. As a little ring, sometimes is orange, and it is... Uh, good that be orange. I have some discussion with some customer that say, oh, is orange is not good. No, 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 the taleggio, if it is orange, the ring is the perfect uh, taleggio. And of course you can remove because every people, every consumer can decide what, what they want. But the, the particular of taleggio that is a, a tasting that is really uh, unique and particular. Remain a soft, so you can uh, uh, also put on a sandwich uh, um, on a, uh, whenever you want is, is, is a table cheeses. It's a great, but great, with, great, uh, it's a great uh, cheese in the kitchen. It's a great cheese. Exactly. In the very very exactly. easy. You don't have to have an occasion. And, and the U.S. is very, very savvy to, uh, to Taleggio. It's a great selling cheese here. It really is. So it's great. And, the, and our facility um, was the first to get the DOP for um, for that cheese. So we are DOP number one um, for Taleggio, which is a, which is a, moment. And Casa Vicia Via um, is a great company. It started out as a great company and it remains that way. Um, and we produce only a couple of cheeses. They have the fresh mozzarella there um, and, and one or two others, but all, all in the DOP category. So there you go. And, and another thing on the Taleggio that, of course, you know, the, the DOP give you also the rules of the, of, uh, the, 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 the wheels, uh, not really wheels because Taleggio is not a wheels, but you understand what I mean? So it's a, a two kilos, four, four and a half pound, and you must produce uh, this type of uh, cheeses. But then one time that is aged, you can of course cut and pack whenever you want. So I think uh, we was uh, <laughs> the first company now sometimes as following us, but we was the first company that's selling in US at 200 grams, so seven ounces, I think, mm -hmm. exact weight, Taleggio, that is perfect for the shell, uh, for the uh, supermarket uh, service, service shelf. And uh, it is packed in a plastic, uh, not really, that uh, give more uh, shell life and keep the, the flavor for more time. So you can find this uh, 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 little uh, Taleggio in uh, a perfect condition, and uh, uh, I, I repeat, is really the best uh, for the uh, uh, shell life of this kind of cheese. Uh, of this kind of cheese.
An important, an important thing to note on this. So those seven ounce Telegio are not manufactured as seven ounce Telegio. They are, man they are manufactured as 4.4 pound square, like you're very familiar with if you're buying bulk Telegio in your store now. They're produced that way and they are cut from that piece. And that, uh, though, that seven ounce exact weight, 200 gram, also proudly carries the DOP as well. And there's a, there's a breathable outer barrier bag uh, which is easily removable. You can just put the date on it. The UPC is still on the package uh, if you don't like that there. But for shipping and for the other purposes, it really does help in that cheese. And we feel that that really offers your consumer a very, very consistent, uh, a very consistent cheese. And we proudly have the 4.4 uh, pound as well and a 1.1. So we're very, uh, we're very nimble with Telegio. So they uh, I say before, is a natural color that become with aging the Taleggio, uh, taking your mind that Taleggio normally has uh, three month uh, aging. And uh, uh, some people in Italy, not some, many people in Italy eat also the wine because it's natural. So they just take a knife, they just take a very little um, outside, but just very little, and they eat uh, the, 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 the orange rind. So yeah, it's something I that... You, that you can eat. Then, of course, it's depend by the people, but uh, is yeah. uh, perfectly edible. All right. Okay, so before we get on to the Pecorino Romano, we have a quick video that I'm going to show. So, first of all, you have seen in this video the, the wonderful of Sardinia. is our uh, Caribbean <laughs> place. is one of the most beautiful areas of Italy, and you can see in the video. But also in the video, you have seen what uh, I told you before, just also if it is just a frame, I think that surely you have seen how many hand work is uh, in the production. You see how many time you see the hands of our cheesemaker, of our employee that uh, cure, that uh, um, uh, following the process uh, of the cheese. And also you see salt by hand. You see there are some frame where you see that the hands put the salt all over uh, the Pecorino Locatelli. Just uh, for curiosity, if someone have uh, taken note, there are at the hand uh, a frame with uh, some black uh, uh, pepper. This is not the Pecorino Romano, of course. This is the Pepato Locatelli. Of course, it's Locatelli making the same plant, but it's a different cheeses and a different recipe is the black pepper that is put in the pecorino uh, cheese and uh, it is also in my opinion a, a great great cheeses it is uh, uh, 35 kilos wheel and we can also uh, cut uh, in uh, in umbriola in uh, what uh, size you want yeah we have not is that to explain if someone see the black what it is the black is the pepper that we put in the pepato uh, locatelli pepato
And you saw the ricotta salata being produced in the same plant because that's, exactly. the, that's the byproduct of the, uh, of the curd from the uh, pecorino. Or the milk, I should say, rather than curd. Yeah, it's great to have a cheese that's iconic uh, with a brand. Um, there's probably nothing more recognizable than uh, Locatelli for uh, Pecorino Romano. Lots of us have uh, been venturing into our parents' and grandparents' refrigerators in the U.S. for, you know, growing up and what have you, and always, uh, always with the Locatelli, so at least in mine. So, so okay, so Locatelli is the uh, most recognizable ba uh, brand of real Italian cheese. You can find that if people will, there are people who will buy um, Pecorino Romano and buy Locatelli. It's really uh, known in many, in many places as a, as a cheese unto itself. I think uh, Alberto uh, explained perfectly that hand salting makes this actually a, a, a pretty uh, pretty stand up table cheese. Uh, it's a really really nice a really really nice flavor without being overwhelmingly salty. It certainly, is a great accompaniment for uh, for for many many great uh, for many, many great uh, meals. Do you want to speak a little bit about the, about the about the the, the the factories and the farmers that you guys work with for Macamer? Yes. Uh, so the 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 factory Macamer is there from. Uh, uh, I think uh, the beginning of the Locatelli family production, so more than 100 and uh, uh, pass year ago. Of course, also in this case, only the location is remain Macomer that is in the middle of the Sardinia. And just for curiosity, is also the, uh, the place where is the consortium of Pecorino Romano is located also the consortium in Macomer because it's the middle of the production of uh, uh, the Sardinia. Uh, of the Pecorino Romano, sorry. Uh, the shepherds is all over uh, around uh, the, the plant. So we have over 800 uh, shepherds, uh, not sheep, eh? shepherds, because oh. the production of milk from a sheep is very, very little. Uh, I give you in liters, but then you can make the calculation. A, a cows make more, more or less 30 liters of milk a day. A sheep, if arrive at three, four, liters is already now. So one gallon, I think, is already now. So you need a, a lot of sheep to have the quantity of milk that we need. And another particular, so we have shepherds, we try, of course, to have the same shepherds for a long, long time. We have shepherds that give us the milk from uh, 50, 30, 40 years. Also, if uh, the agreement is uh, uh, on a, a year based, so 12 months, uh, we try to have a long-term relationship with our uh, shepherds for two reasons. One, because of course, uh, it's creating also something between the company and the shepherds. And also because if you know the quality of the milk that they give you, you have no to, uh, every time to make uh, analysis uh, uh, to, to understand uh, the percentage. The very important things to make a cheese, not only Locatelli, Pecorino Romano, but any kind of cheese, is the percentage of fat and the percentage of proteins. Of course, uh, there are no, uh, it, it couldn't be, is uh, um, not allowed to have any kind of uh, antibiotic in the milk and also uh, the percentage of water because you know if there are too much water you pay water for milk so it's better to have long relationship with the same shepherds because you create uh, a, a, a bionivic uh, I don't know if in English you say a, a two-way uh, uh, relationship oh, yeah. one from the company to the shepherds and one from the shepherds that trust in the company and uh, so this is more or less uh, what we what we do and the other particular is that the milk in Sardinia, not only for us, for all the, the Sardinia, is from December to beginning of July. And so you, you have to concentrate the production in these uh, uh, seven, maximum eight months, because uh, during the summertime, the, the, the sheep doesn't produce milk. Eh? One for uh, the principle for the uh, the, 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 the birth of the little, of the little, uh, um, uh, how do you call in English, the little baby of the sheep, the uh, yeah. lamb, of the lamb. So the lamb normally is, uh, the, bur the, the, the burn of the lamb is normally concentrating January, February, March. And so you know that after the, uh, 
the, the burn of the lamb, the, the milk is very, very uh, uh, a, a big quantity. Then in the summertime, more or less uh, disappear, there are very, very few milk. And so also the consortium rules say that you can produce pecorino from November, but in reality, nobody produces in November because there are no milk to July 15. So this is the rules of uh, the production. So we have a production that is concentrated in eight months, but all the other uh, activities of the plant, uh, like salt, like selection, like of course uh, 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 shipping the containers, uh, is all over the here. So you we're also paying a premium for premium milk. Uh, from the sheep yes, we pay, uh, this is a philosophy of Auricchio, so also in Provolone, and then of course we translate, we, we, we put the same when uh, in 1997 we bought the, the Locatelli facility from Nestle. We prefer to give uh, a premium in money, in, in, in cent, uh, in cent for, for little that means a lot of money to our farmers of our sh uh, shepherds if they give us an high quality milk. So there are an average of protein and fat, no antibiotic and the, the right percentage of water. If you are over with protein and fat and lower with uh, uh, water, you have a premium. Uh, even if uh, you doesn't have a premium, if you have a bad milk, uh, we refuse. We refuse for uh, three times. After the three times, we interrupt uh, the uh, um, the religious. So I have to say I've enjoyed listening and uh, understanding a little bit more about the details on each of the cheeses. Uh, I think it's really important that people understand what's gone through to be able to make this a very consistent and uh, exceptional product. And I've been looking forward to being able to pair this. Um, I decided that uh, I would stay fairly traditional you know, when you think about uh, what a lot of people do with uh, the Pecorino Romano is add a little bit of sweetness to it, a little bit of honey to offset a little bit, give it the contrast. So um, Perseverance um, Society produces a hot honey. And so I thought it'd be really fun to do a little something a little spicy with this. Uh, so I have that. And then another thing that I really love about uh, the flavor characteristics that it picks up is the rosemary. So I have the rustic bakery, rosemary and uh, olive oil uh, crackers. So I wanted to make it fairly simple, but also at the same time, I wanted to add in something a little more fun uh, than just going traditional and just a little bit of honey on it. Now, for beverage wise, uh, I've chosen to, uh, a, a lot of times I do a brown ale. You know, you wanna have that maltiness. But uh, uh, Fat Tire, New Belgian, has got so much maltiness to it, but it also has just a hint of uh, hops to kind of give a little bit of a cleaning. So you get that salty, malty, uh, uh, you get the uh, wonderful honey with the spiciness, and of course the rosemary. So. It's, uh, this is actually almost a, a meal in itself. Uh, so, uh, you know, kind of one of the fun things about that. So what do you guys do with it? I eat it just like this. I, I make the same of John. I eat like a cheese with a nice glass of red uh, Tuscany uh, wine or any other uh, red wine, or I love, I repeat, like I, I said before, in some kind of pasta, I, I prefer uh, Pecorino Romano Locatelli instead of Parmigiano. Not all, but some pasta need ask for a Pecorino Romano Locatelli. Yeah, I think, you're a, I think your idea of honey is fabulous. I really like to work with that as well. I do like fig, uh, fig paste as well any of those things that are really kind of clingy that have a really nice full flavor like that. Although I have to try the, uh, the spicy one. So that was really good. It's really well, good. Well, you know, when you're handling honey, I have to tell you that, uh, I have Savannah bee honey and it has a pump to it and it works really, really well. 
but uh, having the ability to be able to just uh, completely control uh, <laughs> how much honey that you want to put on it because it is hot. I mean, you don't. I mean, it is no kids game. It really is a lot of um, uh, jalapeno in there, so uh, it, it makes it really interesting, but also makes it uh, gives it a little bit of spice. Uh, I've been using pecorino romano in my pastas and dishes. Um, I I honestly believe that uh, grated parmesan or grated locatelli uh, pecorino romano is an additive to just about everything to yeah. give it, uh, salads uh, across the board. Uh, and I use a little bit of grating just on there. I wouldn't say in replacement of salt, in accompaniment to salts. Yeah, it's, it's nice because you definitely get some body that goes along with it. So I really enjoy this. If I'm, if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna broil fish, I kind of enjoy it like that. And I, I know sometimes if you ask certain people, putting cheese with fish is kind of this no-no, but this is now, Locatelli is an ingredient. It's, you know, all kidding aside, it's a wonderful table cheese, but it's a step up experience when you are adding it to a dish. So if I'm broiling fish, I like to mix that with maybe a little bit of lemon, and a little bit of breadcrumbs and put it on top of that. You put it over these nice, cool little potatoes that they have. You can actually sprinkle them over French fries and what have you. This It's a very, very interesting um, dynamic that happens with that. And, you know, there aren't very many cheeses that would hold up to a, to a pepper honey but you know that Locatelli or that Locatelli is going to cut right through. And it's there in a pleasant way. It's not there to be off-putting or to be, oh, my God, I just ate a salt lick. It's just, it's a nice little, it's a nice little bump of, 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 of pecan flavor. And also, and also, John, there are a very famous recipe in Italy, but I think also there that is the meatball. Inside the meatball, you have to put, my mother say, a mix of Locatelli, Pecorino Romano, and Parmigiano Reggiano. To, to have the best meatball, you have to mix these two kinds of cheeses. And also, we, we have the idea to, to, to prepare already, we call it Sandy Blend, exactly. Sandy yes, blend. Sandy Blend is a, a mix of uh, Parmigiano Reggiano, of course, imported from Italy, and uh, uh, Locatelli Pecorino Romano, because it's typical, typical to the meatball. There you go. Beauty of this is the sweetness of the sheep's milk, the, the buttery fat that you get from that. And uh, um, it just brings out so, so much richness and any one of the honeys work really well, but uh, having it for recipes. So speaking of that, is that we have a, uh, a cheese container. There you go. Yeah, it's a nice little, a nice little, uh, a nice little vessel for your, uh, for your grated pecorino romano locatelli. Uh, put that right in the refrigerator, and um, I guess you could get that through Michael. Uh, we'll be more than glad to send that along, uh, along to you. So, yeah. one is filled, and uh, we've already used it like three times. It's just grabbing it out of the refrigerator and uh, giving it a little bit of shake, and then we add it on, put it back, and it stays really fresh. Um, because of the uh, that nice little uh, O-ring, that gasket on here. Yeah, and by the way, so so just a, another little comment about that. Never, never, never any additives. Never any uh, cellulose. Never any natamycin. This is fresh grated Locatelli Pecorino Romano in every bag, in every cup, um, in every wedge. We never ever use any manufacturing aids. Um, as a matter of fact, we only had, cheeses. That's right. Only <laughs> cheeses. One hundred percent cheese. Yeah, we've had people uh, that produce uh, some of the equipment that we use that, that say this is the only plant we've been to where you just don't see other things that are there. And you're allowed to declare them, we, and we certainly understand that. But never, never in Locatelli, never in any of our grated cheeses. Um, um, you know, so. I, I have to say that when you sent me this bag, I thought, oh, my God, I got a lot of supply. I'm already a quarter way through it. I will be done with this probably in about 10 days. So it might <laughs> seem like there's a lot here. But it it goes really fast. Yeah, the first one's free. <laughs> <laughs> and I yeah. really appreciate that. Hey, just a little comment, by the way, just to, not to send anybody off. Sunday blend, we use Italian Parmesan. Not necessarily, we don't use uh, Reggiano in that. We use Italian Parmesan and Locatelli. Yeah. Oh. All right. Oh. So anything else you'd like to say before we uh, conclude here? Well, I hope you got something out of this. I appreciate uh, you giving us the time in your 
workplace or in your living rooms, which may be your new workplace. But thank you for giving us the time and talk a little bit. I thank Alberto for being out there at 10 o'clock at night on a, on a, on a wonderful, uh, wonderful evening in Italy. And thank you very much for, uh, for doing that. And Michael, thank you for inviting us. You're very welcome. Thank you. And hoping to see you soon. That it means that everything is good. There you go. Absolutely. And uh, again, I appreciate you uh, sticking with us uh, late at night and being available. Fantastic information, fantastic cheeses, and uh, I hope everybody enjoyed themselves. And uh, guys, uh, be careful out there, and hopefully uh, we'll see you sometime in uh, 2021. That's it. Be well, stay safe. All right. You guys take care. All right. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.